G'day, how you all going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, aka Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. Today, I'm going to paint that beautiful moon you just saw up on your screen there, okay, in the opening credits. Alright, and we're going to do this in acrylic, and it's going to be on a canvas board that I've got stuck to a board on my easel there. And for those of you that want to know what size my canvas board is, there they are right there in centimetres, all right? All right, the colours that I'm going to use in this painting here, they're just going up the screen there like that, so you can take time to read those as they go up or pause it and write down the colours. And that way you can watch this video, the entire length of it, knowing what we're going to do if you want to do some of my paintings, and then get everything ready and then go back to the beginning and play and pause and play and pause and paint along with me. Now in this one, I'm going to use my clear medium retarder, okay? It doesn't matter what brand it is, but it's clear. It looks like oil in there, okay? So it's clear and it's a medium. What this product is, is called a medium for the acrylic paints, okay? And this medium is, where's my monitor there? Is a retarder. Now what the retarder is, it retards the drying time down. Retard means slow down. This is for all you beginners out there that want to know a lot more to get yourself going along, okay? So it slows down the drying time of acrylic paints. Now make sure when you use this, you don't want to use the nasty, cheap, real sloppy flowing acrylic paints. You can get some like they, I've got some here in tubes, but they, they come out pretty much very much like water. And they're very, they're not thick in pigment. Get yourself some good quality acrylic paints that have structure in it, okay? They've they got body, they've got thickness. And what this retarder does, when you're mixing it in your paints, it allows your paints to mix and blend like oils and you can stretch them through and you can get that, oh my God, I'm loving the way this is working. That's how I found this. I discovered this in the art store myself. No one told me how or why or what it actually does. I just discovered it myself, that how it works for me and my habits of painting. And to get... A lot of the paintings blended the way I do them. I'm going to show you this, all right? And I've got a dry, raw canvas paper I've stuck onto a canvas board. Or let's just say you bought a canvas board from the art store and it's dry, out of the packet, ready to use. What I do to get the looks that I'm getting in a lot of my blended and um, merging colours is I start with this, it's got nothing on it, all right? There is absolutely nothing. There's nothing there, you can't see nothing until you start putting the happiness onto that canvas board. Now, grab yourself a spray bottle or a squirty bottle. You need one of these if you're gonna do acrylic painting. Make sure you got some good paper towel. If you don't have paper towel, down here I've got some rag. So when you're finished washing your brush, you can wipe them out on there. Anyway, so we're gonna start from scratch, all right? So what I do, I'll get the color white, my flow, I always start with a white flow, so I'll get stuff on my easel, all right? So we'll get some of that on there, okay? And we're gonna get some of the phalo blue, I love phalo blue, there we go. And we'll get some dioxane purple. Now these are good quality. The phalo blue and this dioxane purple, they are a good quality acrylic paint. This flowing white paint is just anything simple and easy because that is just going to prime up my canvas, all right? Now back up here, I've got my squirt bottle, that's dry. I want to spray that, but I don't want to spray too much where it starts running down with water, okay? You just want to mystify it with water. Put a mist on there, all right? So, hang on, I've just filled this up with water. I'll get the trigger full, okay. Okay, that water is just sitting there. It's not running down, it's just there, beautiful. Now, back down here, I'm grabbing my retarder. I'm putting a puddle 
next to that white paint and I want to get a brush and apply that paint to the canvas. So we'll get a brush here. I'm just going to use a two inch brush. Now load your brush up with some retarder and start mixing that white into it, okay? Now what happens, see this, it's not just raw white, it's got like, it sort of looks oily and blendable. That's what that retarder does, I love it. So I want a bit more in there. Experiment with your paint and retarder how much you're gonna need for the climate where you live. Now back up onto the canvas here. Now this has been sprayed wet, this brush is full of white flowing paint with retarder in it. Now we want to just get this up there, all over the canvas board. That is ready to blend some beautiful colours into that white. It's not going to be chalky and dry and uh, 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 stiff, okay? So I better clean this. Now back down here, I have my phalo blue and retarder, okay? And I wanna start with my phalo blue because I know I want this phalo blue to be blended with other colors into the background of this painting, okay? So hence why I'm having the retarder in it. Let's go back up to the canvas there. All right, so I want to, let's, I'm wiping this on about the middle there, about there like so just about there now I've got that on there why I sometimes I just put the paint on but I don't mind this scratching the white see it scratched the white through this blue here I don't mind it doing that because I need some lighter colors in there and I'm going to grab my blending brush now I want to blend this blue but I've got to work hard here if you're not filming you get time to do everything in real time, but I've got to stop and start. So I want to blend this blue so I'm getting rid of all those ugly brush hair strokes out of that blue. I'm going to create the art piece the way it should be without ugly brush strokes. Now, keep drawing your, wiping you the excess buildup of paint off your brush onto a paper towel or a rag. And I'm just getting those bits of brush strokes out of there like that. Now at the moment, this edge here is just stopping at the white. So let's sort of bleed that in now. Now see what that retarder has done when I've mixed it in all the colors so far that I've used on here. You get to do all this blending. Wipe your brush and blend out. Now practice blending, practice sceneries, practice everything before you do a full on painting. Now see how you can see a solid bit and a white lighter bit there? Put some effort into it. Now blend those two together just so it looks a bit more like you put some pride into it. You put some effort into it. And when people stand back and look at your painting, they're not looking at a painting that looks okay, but it's got a few butts in there, you know? You're just putting that extra mile into it. So you're blending those two and then come back. I'm going overboard here, but this is just to show you beginners simple steps, okay? Now we've blended that out into the white. Now this sky color, I want a bit of atmosphere in there. So I'm grabbing just a fan brush, just something to pick up some of that liquid white that has the retarder in it, okay? And I want to just kind of, I know that I want some sort of something. I've put it on. I haven't brushed it in. Otherwise, it'll start doing the blending that I don't want it to do. Now, I'm going to grab my blending brush. Let me grab one of these other ones that I was talking about. I did a live video this morning showing people and talking to people. Now, I want to blend this white into this blue, okay? So as I'm blending, I'm not just got that brush heavy on there and I'm not just blending the living buggery out of it. I'm on and off, I'm blending, I'm on and off and sometimes I'm finding the edges of the brush to do it with. Okay, so wipe your brush and find bits and blend them. 
and you've got sort of um, a smoky marble look happening in your sky. See what's happening here? This is not clouds. This is just something to break up that solid blue color. I don't want it just solid blue, all right? I could have applied the blue in a different way and had this already happening. Now, I know I'm gonna have sort of a mountain here, so I want some sort of mist happening in the lower part of the atmosphere of this sky, okay? And then when I get the dioxine purple on here, I'll be able to add mist and clouds over the whole colored area then. But see, that's just added some more tones and colors into that blue. It's not just a solid blue, okay? That's what I was looking for. Now back down here, I've got my dioxine purple and that retarder. So I wanna get the dioxine, I'm stabbing it into my brush and getting some retarder. Not too much, because all that other paint on there has already got retarder in it. I'm just putting a little bit less in this one to help it along. So I'm getting all that pushed into the brush. And I wanna stab this on now. I want the corners reasonably dark in this. Bomb that brush up with that dioxine, okay? And as it comes to the blue, it can come a bit lighter, all right? So I'm stamping that on. I, I use the word stamp because I'm like stamping it, okay? So we're getting that stamped on there. I'll do the top half first. All this is still damp from that retarder, but I've got to work fast because my lights have a tendency of wanting to dry the paint. Now I want to blend this dioxine, okay? Come in a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing here and constantly wiping your brush onto a paper towel or a rag. Now, I haven't gone into the blue yet. I'm blending the purple, okay? And there's a buildup, see here, there's a buildup of heavy dioxine there, right? So I'm being careful not to push that too far into the blue yet. I'm getting rid of those buildups. There we go, it's gone. I'll quickly come over this side. Dabbing it on and off and twisting. Okay, it's very important to practice your blending and when you feel I've got it, I've got it Well, then you know you can do it in a painting because a lot of people Blend the buggery out of their paintings and they've washed it away Okay, now I want to blend that into the The blue bring it down into the blue So they're merging together. Okay And watch this I'm just gonna try I'll grab another brush that hasn't got all that in it And I'm going to blend that just so as we've got those two colors merging softly and they're having a beautiful dance together they're coming together see how that's come together now and we've got to do that over here so this is virtually a totally different brush that I'm using to blend just because that other one was getting a bit contaminated okay and when you're at home you can stop and stand back and look at it and work out I want a bit more blue here to blend into there and so forth, okay? Okay, so we're getting this done. I wanna go a bit more here now. It just doesn't seem to be having the desire I want, so I wanna blend it down some more. I've just looked into the monitor there and I can see it needs a bit more blending. Okay, now what I'm going to do is grab my blue. I can see it needs a bit more. Let me get a bit on there. I want a bit more blue blended into that purple because I'm starting to create a white band here and I don't want that to happen. Anyway, we're getting there. I'm gonna, I can easily put, where's my purple? I need some more purple now. Have a look at it and then see what I've done. I've feathered those into there. And blending it, just so it's not a, a even pattern circle blending area, it's sort of, it's got forks in it and broken edges everywhere. Now 
And then we've got to do this down the bottom half as well, kind of. How's that looking in there? That's looking all right. I'm just looking at the monitor there. We'll put a bit more over here. Now I'm just going to quickly do the bottom half here. Stamp it on, but I'm doing it quickly. I'm doing it quickly because I can feel my paint starting to dry, turning the camera on and off, and it uses a lot of more time than what you would use at home painting. But you can see what we're doing. We're blending all this down as well. Okay, I'm going to grab the structured white, but before, the, before I do that, I just want to say a special hello to Patty Kennedy. I was talking to her on Facebook Messenger and we had a little talk about art and I told her that I'll mention her in my next tutorial. So hello Patty Kennedy, okay? Now we're going to add some mist to here, okay? So we'll get a bit of structured white, okay? It's not the flowing white, it's, it's, it's a lot more thicker. And I'm going to grab my fan brush, scallop that onto both sides of my fan brush. And we're just going to work out sort of where I want some mist. I want some, where's my monitor? There it is there. I want some, so I sort of spider leg it in lines like so. I've got to quickly grab my blending brush. And I want to blend this into those background colours. See how that's blending? Wipe your brush and work out the pressure. You want to get rid of those hard edges. So we are converting this into this. And that's the goodness of that acrylic clear medium retarder. Now look at that, I just spat on me canvas there. And it helps you to get this effect in your acrylic paints. There is a white retarder, but I've never used it, I stick to what works for me, and that clear one works for me great. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to add mist. Right there, grab your blending brush, and blend that into all those colours. I hope my sound, everyone can hear me properly. See, I'm twisting my brush as I do it. I'm not just keeping it one way. Get artistic with your art. That's what art's all about, being artistic. Okay, there's some more mist. Now I want to get some, probably some, a bit more heavier mist across here. So I've done that mist, I've done that mist. Now I'm going to put some dimension in it and get this one over there. Get some more paint. That's the sort of shape I'm wanting it to have, that sort of whoop, whoop shape. All right. Now we'll blend that. Remember to always wipe that brush you're blending with on a paper towel. See, now this has put this mist in front of the mist I did there type of thing. That's what it's doing. And we're going to have a moon sitting up here as well. Wipe that brush and get that mist happening. Okay, I've just added some more on the edge here. See if I can wipe that. <laughs> See, this purple dioxine has picked up a tone into that white and it's gave it a different tone, which is quite nice. Works good for the painting. And just soften it up. Now, I've got some flow white onto my fan brush. I just want a, a bit of a simple cloud in here to keep the moon company. So I want to put the cloud in so I can blend it. And then I've got to dry it to put the moon in, okay? So we'll put a, oh, I had a, a bit of a cloud there, okay? That's it for the cloud. Now, I want to blend that cloud down 
I'll use a smaller blending brush. One of these ones that I got from the hardware. Where is one? Oh, nice and cheap. So I want to blend it from halfway down into the sky. Tickle the tops a little bit and give your cloud a bottom. Get some of the top tickled up. Now, just to sit that cloud back, you want to get a bit more white and put in front of it. That'll do. And we'll blend that down, just the bottom of it. But we're not blending it into the atmosphere, we want to keep a bottom on that cloud. Now around this darker dioxine area, that's more or less the darker part of the sky. You don't want them here, I want to add some stars, so we're going to sort of flick some into this darker area. Now find yourself a pretty stubborn brush, or even if you've got a toothbrush, the stubborn the hairs, the better the paint will flick. Let's try a toothbrush. We'll get that. Let's see how that's going to flick. That's better. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to load this toothbrush up. Okay, now I've got my toothbrush. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold it this way. And I want to try and get some stars there. Let's load it up a bit more. Just in the purpley bits. Oh, paint's going everywhere. You can, once you get a, once you've had a couple of flicks, you can sort of control what's coming off the brush. Okay, that'll do. All right, now we're going to dry this, but uh, a lot of people ask, why am I wearing gloves? Well, see all the paint on my fingers. That's why I wear gloves. Okay, it's so nice at the end of the painting to take them off, and your hands aren't caked with paint. All right. So this is the part where we blow dry it so we can put the moon on there because we don't want to put the moon on a wet surface, okay? So now I'm working out where I want my moon. I don't want it right in the middle. I want it pretty much high up here because this is sort of like you're up on a mountain here and you're looking down at another mountain and the moon's just in the background, all right? So I've got a template of circles that I've made on some acetate paper, which is very thin plastic paper and you've got different sizes you can have but I think I'll go for that size right there my can you see that I'm gonna go for that smaller size all right I've got my template on for the moon now I'm just grabbing some gray tone out of a tube it's already mixed up as a gray and the white and um, now you can either put this moon on with a brush a pouncer which is a round piece of sponge you can stamp on or I've done it in the past with kitchen sponges as well. Now, once you've got your pouncer or your sponge, it's bone dry, it's bone dry. Give it a, a bit of spray with water, just so it's not bone dry anymore, okay? Now, I normally start off with the white, so we'll get a bit of white onto there, stamp it onto your pouncer. Now, get in here a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing, all right? Now you work out if you want a full moon or a half moon or a three quarter moon. Now, see that's coming off the pouncer onto there quite well. That's because I wet the pouncer, okay? So I might want, let's get a bit more paint on there. I'm getting the edge, stamp it on. I, I just want sort of half a moon. That's just the basis for the grey tone, okay? I'm just gonna wipe, twist it, get the bulk of that white off there. Now down here I've got some grey tone, so now I'm going to load this pouncer up with the grey tone, okay? And then we'll just Put some greys in there. Have a look at 
where your moon needs the grey. See, that's primed up. All that white's virtually covered. That's because it acted as a primer for that grey, okay? Now grab yourself a little brush, just something small. I'm just stamping some black into there. And then I'm stamping it out. Now I want to see why I stamped it out. That's not a big thick blob. I want to put some shadows into this moon. Don't overdo it. That's it. Now I'll get my pouncer and kind of blend that. It's up to you how creative and artistic you want to get with your moon, okay? But that's just, that's it. Now that pounce is clean. I'm loading it up with the white structured paint, okay? Now see my pouncer, I want that paint all over it. So it's fully loaded and I can control how it goes onto the palette instead of not having enough. So I know I've got enough paint on there. I want to highlight virtually the bright side of the moon there, just like that. Turn it around, get some clean paint. I've got plenty of paint on there. And I was just thinking while I was doing that, I'm grabbing the same paint on another flat brush just to give it some texture and like dots and blobs and coming off the edge so it's just not uniformly stamped. See like that? I'm just I'm just stuffing, I'm just doing that bullshit effect. And maybe a bit there, okay? That's it. Now we'll pull that stencil off there. And you've got a reasonable moon. I'll just get the glare off that moon. Okay, from the overhead light, so you can see roughly what the moon looks like. But it's, I want to put some sort of mist just coming in front of it now. I've dried that so as I don't disturb the moon. I'm getting the structured white paint and I'm working out where would I want some mist. So everything's dry now. So I've got to sort of, let's get this mist back there. And quickly, I've got a really smaller brush here. Oh, I think I went too much there. You've got to go very lightly. Doesn't matter. We've put some cloud or something in front of the moon, which is what we want. Wipe that brush. You get the paint onto your brush and then you wipe it off. And then we want to, see, wipe that right off. And then I'm going to turn that into mist. Wipe it right off. There's still too much there. And blend it out. There we go. You've got to be very minimal on what you put in your brush here. See, this brush is... You might think there's nothing in it, but there's enough to show on the canvas what you've got. something over here as well just so it's got misty stuff in front of it sitting it down into the sky because the moon isn't in front of everything it's behind everything all right that is all done for the sky and the surrounding background areas I want to put in a bit of a base mountain here now so I'm going to start off with black I've just grabbed a simple flathead brush and I'm going to I've just mapped out a little line here how I want the top of the mountain to go. We'll get him in there. Just something simple. I've added a little bit of water to this black so it flows off the brush a lot simpler. Just out there like that. What I'm doing here is using the brush and bringing it back as far as I can into that dioxine purple 
and it's breaking up as it's doing it. Why I'm doing that, that's gonna act as depth in the foreground, okay? Now we're gonna put some colors into this dark background of a mountain to bring it to life. Now I'm gonna use a little scenery brush. It's just a little, where's my monitor there? It's just a little brush, like so. And I'm going to use Van Dyke Brown to layer the colors with some yellow oxide and white, okay? Just to give this mountain some sort of life. Okay, I wanna start with this side. So down here, I've mixed up some Van Dyke Brown with some white and I'm getting on my flat chiseled brush. Now in acrylic, we use a brush for our mountains, not a knife. I wanna come maybe here on the top. I'm finding the top, covering it up, the very edge. Okay, like that, all right? And then we'll I'm trying to think artistically here. Get this on. Over there into that area. Now the same on the other side. <clears throat> and that can sort of, you can leave some blacks in it. Now wipe your brush, you don't have to wash it, just wipe it. We'll get a bit of um, yellow oxide. Now I'm not, I just wanna see if this is gonna do what I want it to do. I've put it on, I've wiped my brush, and I wanna, yeah, there we go. Scrape it outwards into that mountain, get a bit more on there, maybe down here. You're, you're, you're putting it on, like, like so, work it out where you think you want it. Wipe your brush. And quickly blend it into that mixed up Van Dyke brown and white. That's it, we're just adding some other values and tones in there, okay? Now we'll go on this side as well. Yeah, we'll get mainly the, the top here done. Because the moon's hitting there. I can dance it down like so. Quickly wipe that brush. You're just wiping it, you don't have to wash it. And then scoop that down into the hillside as well, okay? Okay, so we've got our yellow oxide and we're putting some white in it now, like that. And then this is virtually the highlight. I wanna go from that edge What I want highlighted, I'll wipe the brush, wiping it, wiping it, see, it's important to wipe it. And then we'll push this down into those other base colors there. So it's more of a, get that one up that way, and that one down that way. Stamp it on if you have to. Push it through, don't do too much at a time because if it dries before you can bleed it through, just doesn't cut the mustard. Light your brush and blend it. Now I'll show you a little trick. See, that's drying, but it's not quite blending. So you get your bottle, give it a spray, and then just a little bit. Now you watch this. I've got to dry that brush, because that's gonna blend oh, lightly. See what that water did? And that's a good thing about this Atelier acrylic paint that I'm using, it's interactive. You can wet it up and it'll, it'll activate itself again. I've just got some of that gray mixed with black and I just wanna create some sort of, you know, something down in this deeper, darker valley here. I don't know, hopefully it's gonna work. I'll wipe the brush, 
you probably don't have to do this, but sometimes I get bloody carried away. And blend it into there, just so it's not too stark of a black colour. I just feel I want a bit of white highlight bleeding into that there, not too much. In the middle of a painting, you want lighter colours to bring the eye there. That'll do it. We don't want to kill too much. Now, I want to add some, just a bit of greenery to this distant mountain. It doesn't have to be too detailed, so I'm grabbing that flathead brush again. And I've got forest green, sap green and yellow green, depending on which ones I want to use. It doesn't have to be too dark because it's far away, okay? And I want to lace in some green in there, all right? All right, we'll start with the forest green, which is the darkest of it all. And if anything, we can lighten that up. So we want to come, I'm doing like lines. I love doing lines. And then fill in, put some greenery onto that mountain. It might look black. Now I'm going for the sap green. See, these are the three greens. You've got the dark, a medium, and a lighter colour, which is forest green, sap green, and yellow green. Now that's the foundation for our greens. We want to keep this edge here still dark. So now we're going to slowly highlight the centre bits with our sap and forest. So this is going to dribble over this forest green. But don't kill all the forest green. Leaving this dark here. Don't bring it all over here. Okay, we'll only come out to about there. So we're dancing this around, breaking up some of that forest green with the sap green. This actual sap green I've got is Australian sap green, but just any sap green will do. And we're leaving the dark bits behind all here to create the depth in this. Because it's acrylic, between each layer of colour, you've got to dry it. If you don't dry it, the paint will mud up and it will frustrate you, alright? So remember to dry every between every layer, because we're not blending here. Now we're on to our yellow green. Now, we've put the darker green here, we've put the sap middle colour sort of in the middle. You don't want to bring this lighter colour now all the way to the edge. We want to... This is the actual grass foliage we're going to see. So this is highlighting over all that sap and forest green. See, I've sort of danced a little bit of yellow into that yellow green just to give it a bit more luster. Okay, now I've just, I haven't cleaned the brush, I've got the littlest bit of white and I want to sort of fan some white through this green now just to highlight bits to give it more dimension and colour and the keeping the brightness because the moon's there if anything keeping some brightness into the middle of the painting just on the edge of this mountain as well just the very littlest bits highlighting Okay, we're getting near the end of our painting. I hope you're having fun joining me here. This is where you can click subscribe to my channel and share it to everybody on Facebook because the more people you can share my work with, the more it gets me to be in front of you every day. At the moment, I'm busy, but if this can get more busier, I'd rather be doing this for you people out there instead of jumping on a roof every day. All right, now we're going to enclose this with some foreground foliage and we're going to go with the darkest Dioxine purple. Now find yourself a brush you like to use for foliage like trees and stuff like that. I've got my favourite one, but use whatever you have that works for you, alright? Now we'll get our Dioxine purple and we're going to sort of frame it at the front here. Keeping this dark colour. Don't want to cover that dark colour there up of the green that we put in there. Now I'm getting the Dioxine Purple on my foliage brush and I'm just stamping it in front of this painting trying to get these edges broken up and loose, not too thick and blobby. I'm 
get this coming right across the front of the painting to house the background in and then we'll highlight this with some white colours mixed into this deoxine purple alright alright I've done my deoxine purple with the foreground foliage now I want to highlight it there's the moon so the moon's going to highlight all these sides back so I've grabbed a little bit of white into my brush and I want to highlight some of this now leaving some of the darks in it okay do like umbrella shapes coming down we'll go over this side Across the top. Create bushes in front of each other. There we go. Now we'll get a bit more white on there and highlight it again. Be sure to wet your brush a bit so it'll transfer onto your canvas and then let's highlight again nice and softly not too much you don't want to just get carried away here put bushes behind and in front of each other see there it's starting to look a bit stampy and uniform blur it all in there over here just the top of that bring it in and this is just our foreground closing the painting <laughs> now I've got some more deoxine straight deoxine purple on that same brush and I'm looking where it might be too bright and I haven't dried it or nothing sort of wash them through a bit lay them back down so they're not too stampy see and we're getting some beautiful shrubbery sort of like shrubs and bush now I've grabbed some deoxine and white on my script liner quite a thick one and I want to carefully I want a bit more dioxine in that I want to try and get some trunks in here just coming from the bottom upwards just to make it look like there's some branches in there do some on this side All right, now we'll put a frame on that and just see how she looks, eh? There you go, we've got our moon high in the sky. We're up on a higher hill here looking down. We've got some mist and clouds in the sky and a darker foreground here, okay? That's not too shabby, eh? All right, I hope you like that beginner's exercise of a moon high in the sky. Tell a friend if you like what I do, but if you don't like what I've done, you tell everybody, okay? All the best to everybody, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya!